Hey friends, it's been a while since the last update, but I wanted to do some videos here. I've got some footage in the can that I haven't shared with you yet, and I've been doing some little little budget mods to the X-T225. I wanted to share them all in this video. Maybe I'll make some more in-depth uh, videos on each mod later on, but uh, we'll hit the high points today and the reason that I've done these things. Uh, obviously, the world and the nation uh, faces uncertainty right now. I haven't been doing a whole lot of riding because of the pandemic, but um, hoping things free up soon. I'm certainly looking forward to it. We had a big ride scheduled in May that's now been pushed back to September. So uh, I'll just keep doing what I can here on the channel when I can. And I've got some ride videos, a couple uh, places I've been that I'll put up that I did late last year that I just never got around to posting. In this video, I'm gonna go over three mods that I've done to the X-T2 25. And they're really all as a result of this one ride out to Pike State Forest here in Ohio. It's a great OHV area super well manicured, nicely taken care of. And uh, this one hill in particular taught me a couple things about the bike. Now here's my first attempt at this hill and uh, things are going well. First gear, second gear, wind it out. But uh, I ran out of talent here at the top and took the wrong line and ran out of traction. You can see sliding back here, it's, it's pretty steep. It's a good drop back down. Uh, so I wanted to try a new rear tire. My old one is just shot. And then coming back down the hill, I was riding tight and I managed to get cross rutted. And I felt like a lot of it had to do with the fact the forks were just bottoming all day and riding in the lower part of the stroke. Here we are coming back up. The bike did just fine, but I do wish there was just a little bit more grunt. And so I want to try and get a little bit more pulling power with some lower gearing. And altogether, I want to address the front forks, stiffen them up a little bit, drop the gearing a little bit for a little bit better climbing power, and then change that rear tire because it just needs it. So I'll give you an example of the forks bottoming out. Even hitting small things like this would use most of the travel. And here, there's a loud clunk of metal on metal. I'll uh, slow it down. And so on these recurring water breaks, that just kept happening, bottoming, bottoming, bottoming. So I'm going to try some simple mods here, uh, mainly by increasing the fork oil weight, going up from 10 weight to 15 weight, and then by modding the spring a little bit. You can add a preload spacer to the top of your fork spring to tighten up that initial sag and that initial travel, but it doesn't change the spring rate. So I measured the spring to make sure this would work. And then I cut off two inches from the spring, which effectively raises the spring rate. And I replaced those two inches that I cut off with a PVC pipe spacer. This is uh, seat of the pants stuff. I'm trying to save 150 bucks on new fork springs. And uh, just by shortening this, checking the oil level, making sure that's correct, putting it all back together. When I did button it all back together, it was definitely, definitely just sitting on it noticeably stiffer. Uh, and the static sag wasn't quite enough, I didn't feel. Maybe that spacer could be a little shorter. Anyway, who knows, it's cheap. Uh, shortening the spring didn't cost me anything. The fork oil cost $12, and we'll see how it works. Now onto the gearing. I went from a 15 tooth stock front sprocket down to a 14 tooth Sunstar sprocket. You can see here on the left, the 15 tooth sprocket, the teeth are a bit worn. They're skinny and sharper and it's not ideal to just replace one sprocket at a time because they wear together so uh, i'm just going to try this 14 tooth to see how it works you can see the rear teeth are not in terrible shape but again it's ideal to replace both sprockets and chain at one time but i just want to see how this gearing works before i completely commit to it maybe i'll find this works great maybe i'll find i like something in between the old gearing and the new gearing. So uh, we'll just 
try it out on the trail and on the street and see how it works. I know a lot of people use this gearing for strictly trail. Um, my concern is it might be a little slow for the street. Now that losing traction part, um, again, it's really just my fault. But you can see here that that rear Shinko Golden Boy 244 tire is pretty shot. So on the right is the new 460 by 18 Kenda K270 tire. And these tires get compared a lot. They're both budget tires. They're both around $45. That's exactly what I paid for the Kenda K270 from Rocky Mountain ATV. And uh, they, they compare pretty favorably. One thing I've heard about the K270 that people aren't crazy about is it has more side knobs, which are great for the dirt, and, but they're kind of soft and people have talked about it wiggling on the road, those side knobs, when you really lean the bike over. But I guess I don't lean the bike over enough to ever find that. It's been fine for me in the couple hundred miles that I've put on it since mounting it here. And the mounting went well, except it was hard to get the bead to seat. I had to go to a gas station and get high pressure air to pop that bead. For under $100, we've made the bike a bit more trail worthy, I think, with the new rear tire and tube, the stiffer front suspension, and the lower gearing. So I'll try it both on the trail and the road. I use the bike as a genuine dual sport, riding to riding areas, and then hitting the trails and uh, hopefully this doesn't compromise it for the road too much. So we'll see and I'll report back later. As always, I hope this video was a help. Uh, please do give it a like if you liked it and I would really appreciate uh, subscriptions right now because I'm getting near to a thousand subscribers and that would be a huge milestone. So if you deem it worthy, please do hit the subscribe button also. Thank you so much for watching, more videos to come, and uh, please ride safe.